All right, I decided to do Golden Age first today because, well, I wanted to. Bender! So, yeah, <laughs> started off with a strong one. Uh, Startling Comics 49, the uh, Schaumburg uh, Bondage robot cover, a.k.a. Bender. This bad boy is impossible. Honestly, I, this feels like a decent price. I don't, I don't know what if it really was graded as nice as they say, but, man, that feels like a, a good score. Uh, if I had the cash, I would have probably bought that one because that is – you know, when you're talking iconic covers, that's in the top top 20, 25 of the Golden Age, right? Everybody yeah. knows that one. Yeah, yeah, that's on everybody's want list. So I saw one of those a couple of years or a couple of months back. Um, some guy picked up it in a GA lock. It was like a six or a seven, maybe. It was ridiculous. Oh, Oof. Damn. Yeah. Hey, okay, damn. if it wasn't missing the page, what are mm -hmm. we talking? It'd be it'd, a, cool. Oh. It'd be almost five times that. Woo. Okay. Really? I don't think so. I mean, that thing doesn't. That feels like it is so tough to find. But one page five times, I definitely would think. More, I mean, obviously, we do more, but I think um, it presents really well, so we've got a strong bid. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I, that, uh, just from the screen, like the color looks pretty great with the red dress, with uh, this guy getting all rusty, apparently. Yeah. Or maybe so that's I, a diving suit. Um, no, it's stainless steel, man. That shit don't rust, man. It's because right. it's a robot from uh, what's the robot Bender? It's Bender. Bender, Bender. Yeah. Bender. Bender. That, that doesn't hurt it, man. It's it's been a classic, and it just kind of has really just it gave it a little gas. On a side note, Bender's got to be one of the like best comedic characters ever created, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. I go a little out of order purely because sometimes I like to have a theme. Um, Mary Marvel first appearance. I like, uh, love this book. Uh, as we've talked about many times, because every time I see it sell, I talk about it. But the uh, if you see the back cover there, those were two collectible cards that you could cut out of this book. And so many of them have those cards missing. Um, so, I mean, most of these books are incomplete at best. Um, but this one presents really well for the grade. 750 is not a bad price, because, like I said, just... I would say half of my C have the cards missing. So, um, cool book. Somebody got a nice, uh, nice looking copy. Uh, it was on a bit of a Marvel family roll. I haven't seen this book come off too often. It's real sweet ass cover with the black and then the uh, the full moon. Uh, Captain Marvel Junior uh, origin issue. Two K. Beautiful, beautiful book. And the whole reason I got on this theme was because of this sale. I've been waiting for years and years and years for this book to finally take stride. It had been sitting at about 800 to a grand a point. I probably have this around a 3.5. There's a small piece in the back missing, um, some you know wear and tear. Uh, hit almost 9K. So big jump. Do you still have yours? I got one of them. I, I traded one at one point, but I still have the five five. Nice. See, so even even if <clears throat> even if you got Golden Age finally, you know, we've been talking about how it just hasn't seen the upticks like everything else has. Uh, of course, uh, a movie needle move this thing again, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So here we are, back to back to saying Golden Age getting its due, and here it is as a as the first appearance of the movie character. I didn't. I didn't pull any of them this time, but I have seen Shazam twenty eight starting to move too. So, yeah, it's hitting its stride. Mm, yeah. Hey Z, are your kids like uh, squatting up right now on um, uh, Warzone? Uh, they're. He's doing something with Tarkov. Is that what it is? Yeah. 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 Escape from Tarkov. Doctor yeah. Disrespect. See, 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 I got, I got the ears. Of, <laughs> I got the ears, baby. I can, I know. <laughs> uh, he's, he's gonna go away soon, but. He, he was. I let him play late. Uh, this is one I just don't think I've ever seen. It's a sweet uh, Sheldon Moldoff cover, uh, Unknown World One. I just really caught my eyes. A beautiful cover that I've not seen. Uh, Two fifty for a three five. Only twenty four in the census with a nine zero being the highest. So um, one of those things I'm going to probably put on my watch list and kind of grab one if I ever see it again. Yeah, it's dope. I like that. That's also the kind of book if you had one in this market, you put it up for like. Fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, way more than that. And let like and let like thirty people fall in love with it. And one of them just like, oh, oh I can afford it. Yeah, that's a. I, again, only twenty four copies. You they ain't gonna come up very often. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, all right, into the into the more world of what the fudge. This is this is what I'm going to call this next section. Uh, this is got to be one of the ugliest copies of Giant Size X Men one I've ever seen. Um, if you're listening on the on the uh, podcast, I can't describe how bad it is. Um, looks like it was watered up in a pond and pulled out, and it to boot, it's in a PGX slab. Very yeah. apropos. Very it looks like a burn victim. Yeah, you de definitely good job using PGX on this. <laughs> and, it, and it looked like somebody had like a bonfire and like got it a little too close and then ripped it away from the fire. Like, oh, that's good. Yeah, that's that, how they started. That, hey, they, that, they started the fire with that. Yeah. That looks like an angry X. Yeah, I mean, it looks like it was in the fire and then somebody put it in the pond. I mean, it's bad. But five sixty one. Uh, this market's crazy, right? Is there a lower grade than 0.5? Uh, you could do a page, I think. Yeah. Well, you could no, send it to the new page grading service that puts them in my log. Like I feel, I feel like this is doing a disservice to 0.5s. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no shit, dude. I'd, I'd rather have a coverless. <laughs> I mean, it is really bad. You can get, you can get a coverless uh, 0.3 now, right? Yeah, uh, I think so. But, but I just, I, I love that. Uh, we're all like, I would never throw away a low grade. Is better no grade, but this one might be the exception. <laughs> it is yeah, real dude, rough. that might that might stink up. That might seep out of the, seat, the <laughs> PGX slab and stink up the rest of the shit in your closet. Yeah. So, oh man. Yeah, and you know, and they using PGX. Um, PGX still overgraded it as usual. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that slab will hurt you if you need to throw it at somebody. Yeah, that's true. You take that. You take that slab into battle. All right. zombie well, apocalypse. Next, what the F for me is this one. Um, a 7.5 Malibu Sun 13, 400 bucks. I, that oh. that feels salty, Jimmy. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't uh, Whatever. Dude. What do you mean by salty? Like like it should be selling for more or that's crazy? It feels really high for a 7.5. Well, yeah, dude. I sold, I, see, I sold a 9.6 for 350. Oh, listen. <sighs> I it's agree brave new agree world, boys. You. It is, but it's a brave new world. But I kind of agree with you because when I first saw this and when I was putting this together, I was like, "Oh, that must be the, the air version, yeah, right? right?" And then, I, yeah, yeah, of course, that wouldn't be that bad. But you know what? Uh, ASM. We took you know we we talked about the ASM going three hundred, going for what seven thousand. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, like Nico said, it's a brave new world. I did. I did just watch Comic Link at a nine eight three hundred. I didn't put it in because it was last minute. Uh, it went for like sixty two and change. Uh, there's another one. I don't know if it's tomorrow night or the next section of the auction, but uh, a little less than eBay because eBay had one sell out of my comic shop for seventy four hundred. So I guess four hundred doesn't sound that bad. But I, this book to me, like it just a seven five is a hurt grade on a modern to me. I would have probably thought somebody would pay more raw than a 7.5. So, I don't know. Uh, I think I've got at least two more in the what the fuck section here. Uh, Captain America 337. First appearance of U.S. agent costume. Near mint minus. The fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't dig into it. There's two bids. I don't even know what to say on this one. <laughs> I think I think we know what uh, Mel V would say. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Can we get a clip of that? Maybe we use a soundbite next time. Oh, yeah, that's just maybe we need a graphic for that. Let me get us a, a graphic to play. Um, this one, this one is the price to me makes no sense. Uh, maybe it's a sig thing I don't understand. Um, Hulk three forty has been on fire. Blue labels are over two k, but this is a SS98 McFarlane Ramita. Um, it was listed as 7,000 or best offer. According to GPA, it sold for 6K, which makes not a lot of sense since all the other SSs I've seen. Not a ton of sales like in the last week, but some in the last couple months were not anywhere near this. Is it the only triple sign? And if Stan Lee would have signed that shit on the other claw, that thing would have been badass why maybe, maybe it's the triple sign maybe i just oh that feels he, he can't fucking aim dude <laughs> i just man by the it... time this label came out man he was he, he died later. <laughs> yeah. 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 i mean yeah. but are three sigs worth 4k 
I mean, uh, dude, it's I don't know. I mean, it's okay. So you got you got that one eighty one that's quad signed. Is that worth uh, like a hundred thousand that leg? I I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's like I don't, yeah, I, dude. I have I have no idea, but I'm pretty happy about that. That's one of the, that's one of the last ones that that's one of the last ones to go. Cool. You know, and especially yeah, you know what I mean. But yeah, I get it, dude. Yeah, and you can't, and you just you can't you can't really recreate it. First off, if people are having such horror stories, uh, sending books into SS for CGC. So even if you wanted, um, even you know what I mean, like say you had a nine eight of Stan, and you wanted to add Todd onto it, like you know Jr. is sort of a throw in, I think yeah. on on this book, but uh, not on a lot of books. But to me, um, so I don't know uh, if this is trolling, yeah. but. Yeah, but you, you know what I mean? Adding, getting it together, like, doesn't matter. But that's just somebody's, so, like, crown jewel. Yeah. So somebody just said the label makes a difference, that the Stan Lee Sig. Yeah, so that's the rare silver. And then I guess there's a red label that's even rarer. That's, I guess, when it's signature. What the hell? Oh hey, my hey God. who knows? I, I don't know. I don't claim to understand the. Look at everybody. I guess they. Slab, hey, okay. slab variants. Get out I mean, of here, we're, dude. We're collecting labels? We, uh, well, well three, did you see every. Fuck I off. was trying to do an order the other day, and it was holding me up, so I couldn't get one in before the cutoff. Because every time they ask, "This is eligible for a label. Would you like this special label?" It would be an eight dollar upcharge. Thank you, or five dollars, yeah. whatever it was. So. I, did, I tried. I tried um, on two on two books for resell on them. I tried with uh, for two custom labels, and I'm uh, and they. They took they took forever to get back. I paid more. They they charge it as a separate order and separate shipping. So like when you do that at checkout, your special labels go into a second one. So you got to pay for more. And after oh. you've done the paperwork and realize that, you're like son of a bitch. So I, I remember sending the two, and they got absolutely they got hammered. And I'm hey, like at really, least, at least like you paid, you paid for the extra shit, face, you know, right? That's the true. The hologram's not covering his face like all the other stupid ass labels. Well, so, actually, yeah. what might make sense with Stan is if. The- if the hologram covered his face, it'd be like, how is SIGs anymore? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And subbing books or even subbing for friends, I don't, dude, I don't ever, I don't, I tried it the one time, uh, actually two times, because on site of Baltimore, they had, um, they had a special <laughs> Valiant label, mm. and I had those, those, uh, those. Uh, well, that paid off. Yeah, those number 10, I got a 9-9 nine, nine on one of them with a Valiant label. So, yeah, I sold it, like, two days later. <laughs> All right, um, we're out of the F. What the F section? I mean, this is still a crazy price, but X Men one twenty nine nine six, um, first Hellfire Club, and everybody else uh, eighteen ninety four. So almost two K. I remember when a nine eight was less than this. Mind you, that was a long time ago. Uh, everything X Men is on fire. I mean, literally everything. Uh, this one is another one. The X Factor six nine eight six fifty. Uh, I remember what was it? Maybe, maybe twelve to eighteen months ago, you couldn't give this book away. Yep, it was cold, cold, cold after the uh, X Men Apocalypse. So. That in twenty four, right? Oh yeah, they were dead. Dude, okay. I was I was leaving fine copies online at like twenty bucks last yeah. year. weren't touching it. I'm just like, nah, dude, because I'm sure I got some left. Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a cool book, but there's just a lot of them. Actually, I actually like the book, but there's just a whole lot of them. Well, and we all got so burned on it last time. I think. Oh, uh, that yeah, another that was a. I think that movie dropped when I when I got married, and like, and I got home and I didn't sell anything. For, I wasn't listening to anything for like a month, and I was like, "Son of a bitch!" <laughs> and this <laughs> pile of fucking apocalypse sitting here. What am I gonna do now? Yeah, it was. It went bad. So if you were if you were smart and held on, congrats, you're finally cashing out. <laughs> Um, this one threw me. Uh, first Taskmaster nine eight, not even a newsstand, almost two freaking k. This doesn't was matter. Doesn't three, matter. Three four hundred dollar book for a while. long, long, long time. I I would I would if I if I had the money and even I I've been looking for a newsstand. It's like three grand right now. I think or twenty five hundred. Uh, That's probably more than that. Yeah, I know. But newsstands it's like, are at least a fifty percent premium from what I've been seeing lately. Yeah. Uh, but two grand, I, I, it's such a hard book. You trust me? I've subbed a bunch of these. Well, it's, it's a tough book. Tough. I just don't know if I love it that much. Uh, no. I mean, it's a cool cover. I mean, it I, is. Yeah, it's a beautiful if, cover. I mean, if they had to me, I mean, I, I could be wrong about this, but maybe if they ended up using him uh, for Deadpool mm-hmm. instead, you know, not uh, save him for dead like a future Deadpool movie. 
He may, he may, it. he may stick around. Yeah, he, I'd like, I'd like it a little more than Black Widow. That's just me, though. Yeah. Um, this one, I, I, this should have been in that what the fuck section because uh, first, uh, first, uh, Jim Rhodes, one one eight Iron Man, seven thirty eight. I mean, I. I didn't even check the prices. I should have. I was just such in shock. I threw it in the last minute. Uh, I don't think this has caught heat forever. It must be tied to some of the Marvel uh, Disney Plus shows rolling in the future that we think it's going to gain some heat. Uh, but, man, that's kind of an ugly-ass cover. Just not one that I can really sink my teeth into. I mean, nothing, from, nothing from the peanut calorie. No, one. no, no. I'll, I'll get, how about this? I mean, it's so uh, just ridiculous. How, me, I don't know. How many? How many nine eight do you think of this book out here? Not it's, enough because nobody's seventy nine, right? It's, okay. It's ninety two nine eights. Uh, yeah, I, I just don't think right. people have subbed it. Yeah, maybe there was I no mean, money in it before. I like Don Cheadle. Yeah. But I, yeah, I, I like Don Cheadle that, as much I, I as just the next guy. But like. But it's, been, no one has been cared in the universe. for yeah. years. Yeah. He was and recast for Christ's sake. No one know, cared when it was Terrence Howard. Well, yeah. Well, because it's Terrence it's just, Howard. It, it's like a testament to how crazy the market is, though, right? Yes. I, I know Armor Wars. I get that. I just, I, we, I, I don't know. All right. Well, I'm Next also not just... so sure he's going to be the star of Armor Wars. Are you? Nope. Could go anyway. When we'll definitely hit on that later. Uh, the next, two, that? next two, I'm just going to show, and you know, that's all I got. Uh, newsstand, first Boba Fett, Star Wars 42, nine eight, four K. Uh, mm. This one, I actually, God knows how I missed it. Uh, Harley Quinn, not newsstand. Nine eight mm. white pages, forty five hundred and change. I mean, this was a grand. How long ago? Four months, five months. I was two grand. Yeah, two grand. So it's been floating around. Uh, too. Okay, it got down to what fourteen hundred for a while. Yeah, I had an MCS auction, and it like fourteen hundred probably a couple years ago, and I was not fucking happy. No, it stayed around there for a minute, though. Um, yeah, yeah very, a short minute, but yeah. I think it's, until after that uh, Birds of Prey turd. This is an interesting comment, too. I'd hate to be a new comic collector now. Now, oh. now <laughs> I, I guess that's... Yeah. yeah, right? I mean... Yeah, because, dude, you can yeah, get like... Knights of, hey, get for like the record, one Knights of is brilliant. If you guys get a chance to watch him... What is... I'm Knights just gonna not talk because of my lag, and I'm sorry. No, it's okay. He's talking about Knights of Old. This guy, Knights of Old. Oh. He's a he's a good dude. I like him. Check him yeah. out. So I listen. Yeah, if you're getting into the market right now, man, fuck. If it's Nico. car people, whatever it is, man, it's tough. It's tough out here. And I and I in my head, I'm like, I shouldn't be buying because I feel like I'm paying top dollar. But also, I'm like, every book I don't buy, I'm I'm losing money on. Because they're yeah. going up. Yeah. So I'm like in a permanent argument with myself right now. Yeah, I just had I was on the phone with Nico and we were talking about that. Like I got I got those 25 books from CGC and I'm like, do I just sit do I sit back and hold or do I wait or do you know I think it's 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 a terrible decision right now when you have like graded books and like is you know is Spider Man 299 gonna come and that JG Jones is gonna be worth seven grand at a nine six, you know. I listen. If I got a nine eight need, of anything important, I'm holding. Yeah. yeah. If you if you don't need the money, ask. You know, either ask for the moon. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I, I didn't see it on the market report, but I just sold a Vengeance one nine point eight for two grand. <laughs> well, yeah. There's so much now. I was, it wasn't the, it wasn't that. the cheap. Yeah, it wasn't the cheap on eBay either. I think it was yeah. tied for the most expensive. But when I sold one at twelve hundred, I marked it. I threw that loan up for for two. Yeah. I was like, well, I guess it'll probably get there. I don't know why there was one for fourteen hundred up. I don't know why they didn't buy that, but I'm blaming my free shipping, yeah. which yeah. was like fifty <laughs> bucks insured. But fuck, mine sold for two grand, so yeah. whatever. <laughs> Take it. You know, yeah, and I bought them both for four hundred each, like last year. I don't, you know, so take it. And I don't have any more, but I, I did I think okay. You got out with enough money that you're not going to be sad. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, I'm not. Oh, no, I'm not sad. This pains me right here. A one twenty nine nine four. Uh, yeah. Ozzy was busting my balls because this was one of the first books I scored a deal on and had a nice nine four for years. I sold it to help pay for a family expense in a bad time, uh, about two k a few years ago. Uh, and at four k, I was okay. It was four k six week no three weeks ago. I'm sorry, forty five hundred three weeks ago. I was I was accepting that, and now and three weeks later, it's sixty six hundred. This is the one book I've never owned. Can you believe that? I mean, I've Not owned some long, books. Huh? I've never owned this book. I, and it pains me because I was like, oh, I should buy this. I should buy this. Maybe I'll buy a mid grade. I mean, I don't need a nine four or nothing crazy like that. But yeah, I've just, had I've I've had four and I have none left, and it sucks. The yeah. cheapest I ever got one though was forty bucks. Nice. Because it's really low grade. And this is probably like six or seven years ago. <clears throat> this little shop in the middle of nowhere, kind of by LAX, with this old, old man in there, and he had it on a spinner rack. <laughs> and it was beat to shit. He's like, well, it's, 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 it was. I mean, it's it like a maybe a two o or something like that. There's tears on the cover and stuff. But I mean, whatever. I was like, 40, I was like forty dollars. I was like, yeah, that'll that'll work. Yeah. I, and I think I sold it for like only three hundred or something. I pretty much regret every Marvel book I've ever sold at this point in my life. <laughs> yep, all of them. NBA twelve now too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ultimate Fallout Four for our buddy Nico, who is still taking a beating on a grade. I'm sure he'll share it later. Uh, yep. 9.0 variant, almost 5k. So oh. take solace oh. in that, sir. Um, I mean, and I think that's your collector like cutoff to me on a book this big because you know, oh, 15, yeah. 20, or whatever a 9.8 is going to be. Like, I mean, there's just dude, let's be honest, there's not there's not a lot of people, although there's a lot more new people that can't, not a lot of people can play in that yard. So, you know what I mean? Like, buying investing in a 9.0 in this book, like, if that's probably this guy's you know, wheelhouse or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't think I don't think that's bad. If you start to get in the eights and stuff like that, it's like, well, I think I think you're really gonna drop. I just I just wonder if it's there, there's so much of the crypto like recently rich, and I, and I don't know how much of it's getting diversified there. I don't I don't understand it, and I don't. I, I think don't stock market's doing right. well too. I know a lot I mean, of guys. It used, be, it used to be a thousand dollars was kind of that line of where you're gonna start losing the ability to sell it. And now you're right. It's about five grand where it becomes slightly less liquid. I, I, yeah, I mean, that's crypto and stock market. Like I see a lot of people like getting stock market rich. Like I mean, yeah, you hit a Game Stops and Dogecoin yeah. and all this stuff. But like, there's a lot of people on Wall Street bets that are getting rich by the day, yeah. taking Doge. advice from redditors. Doge to the moon, baby. Doge to the moon, baby. Uh, this, uh, this is not a huge sale, but uh, first Cletus Caddisy, Amazing Spider-Man 344. You know the uh, the 361s getting out of range. People are chasing this one. 430 for a 98. It's a hell of a sale. Um, cheap. What'd you say? I think that seems cheap. It, it no, but that book just never takes off. Yeah, it just never did. Oh, we it's, always, the curtain. it's always been the redheaded stepchild. Yeah, but yeah. No, none of these books have ever, ever took off, and now they all are. And this one's still only sitting at four thirty. Yeah, so, yeah. Do you know how? Do you know how many of those did Robert Kirkman buy from us? Like three, I think. No, he, he bought two, and we sent him three or four or something. I don't know. I mean, we just gave them away. We're like, yeah, cool. We don't care. We're yeah, right. literally, Robert Kirkman ordered this yeah. on the internet. Well, from the was going on. Kind of cool. Uh, this one. Next thousand dollar Marvel books, Secret Wars eight. Um, this one was so obvious. Yeah. Well, we knew it was going up. It's interesting because uh, I have been watching this one because I bought a couple um, in the seven hundred range. I bought the last one, and it was floating at seven eight, seven eight, seven eight nine. Because uh, people keep listing it low at buy it nows, and it go real quick. Um, even right now, I just there for. This morning there was nothing under a grand, and then somebody listed a buy it now at like nine twenty five, and I'm like, it's gonna sell, but this price is slowly creeping, and you know these were the first couple sales at a grand, so did, did it sell? This one did. No, uh, no, I haven't checked that last one. It was it was pretty recently hit the market, so okay. but I think it will. Yeah, I mean it, it just it's creeping when there's so many nine eights on some of these books. I think you get so many people that are just cashing out because they probably got in at two hundred bucks, and they're like, I'm getting out. Yeah. Yeah, um, I don't think that's a bad buy at a grand right now. This one threw me. I should have put Sean Eagle Eyes on it, but a raw um, McFarlane GI Joe uh, Special Missions one sold for three fifty five. 
while a 9.4 CBCS sold for 280. Uh, I didn't see any major defects on it, but I had a hard time believing it was a 9.6 or 9.8. So I've been looking for this bug secretly. I guess not secretly anymore. I've been looking for this bug. I know. Uh, I know one of our uh, compadres has like three or four or five of these. Yeah, so uh, we can guess who that is. The yeah, so yeah. Uh, I, I, this is the one of the few books I hoard. Like. Uh, Scotty hoards ASM three hundred. Yeah, you know it's it's a cool book. I just maybe you need I, to trade him some bottles of conditioner for that hair. Well, <laughs> by the way, by the way, there was a really and and you guys know how I feel about exclusives, and, and um, I bought an exclusive uh, homage to this recently. I haven't got it yet, but I, I really like it, and I just this is one of the few amazing Spider Man homage covers that I will buy if it's good. Um, and this one's just iconic. So, uh, by the way, everybody out there tonight, uh, hang out for after the market report. We have a world premiere exclusive drop from Wanted Comics. So make sure you guys it's hang out. It's a beauty. Out. It is a beauty. All right. Uh, winding down here. Got a few more. Uh, we're on a little bit of a Nintendo kick. Super Mario Bros. number 198 special edition. 500 bucks. Also, since we did a little Nintendo... The Sonic the Hedgehog one from 1991, 9.6, 6.24. Wasn't it like so, 350 back in the day? It wasn't. Yeah, it, it's climbing, man. Any, anything, any young video game is freaking yeah. moving, moving, moving. Brian, I'm going to tag you in for this one because you're a little more knowledgeable, but this one caught my eye. The, yeah. Uh, eight Ball number 1 by Daniel Klaus. Yeah, Daniel Close is is an iconic creator uh, from the late '80s, early '90s, kind of like independent scene. Um, he was kind of uh, part of that like sub pop at this you know Seattle type thing that was going on with alternative music. Daniel Close was really big into that, and um, Eight Ball was his you know magnum opus, like the thing that made him big. If you guys remember Ghost World, that came from Eight Ball. A lot of independent movies and things came from eight ball, but eight ball was like a uh, huge, huge, huge independent uh, book back in the late eighties, early nineties. So is this, guy this from is Detroit? super underrated. No, he's from Seattle. I believe is he, the one he was born in Dennis? Illinois though. He's from Chicago. Is he friends with Dennis? Uh, I'm not sure. Dennis is in the chat tonight. So shout out to Dennis. Dennis, let us know. Uh, but, um, I'm not sure. I know he he did stuff with Sub Pop late uh, after you know everything fell apart for Sub Pop, I believe. But um, he is from Chicago. Okay. okay this is a super a underrated book. Hey, um, about two years ago, I got the first nine eight on that book. Wow! And Ooh. I sold it. And from what I remember, I sold it for around seven hundred. Oh. So. Hmm. That's a low price. Yeah, it hasn't picked up at least. Super underrated. Well, well the very first hard nine to find a high grade. Premium, man. Is is that your? Is that you remember the number? You think that's your nine eight? May uh, yeah. if the census still has just one nine eight, probably, <laughs> yeah. But um, man, yeah, either way, yeah. it's one of those. I like to find some rare gems, man, and uh, that's uh, one that probably nobody's looking for. John, stick around for uh, end of the market report if you have the time, brother. All right. Uh, cut. Still a few more. Sorry, I went long this week. Uh, we talked wow. about some you yahoos picking up some rare freaking uh, uh, Wolverine Deadpool type grants. This guy is the one of the rarest. The Wolverine uh, 145 Nabisco cover. Stan Lee, Ramita, Trempy, Ween signed. Cute K is a tough, tough book to find in any condition, let alone with all the dang sigs in that grade. So, yeah, that's a that's a I'd like to have that. That's pretty fucking cool. That, I've yeah, always wanted a Nabisco and I've never I've never had one. How, how was that and, actually distributed? It was a giveaway, I believe. I mean, through the mail or I think it was a mail away if my memory is right. I'll look which, it up right now. Which probably explains why it was. It was up. a mail away. Yeah, it was a mail away variant. Uh, to obtain this variant, you had to cut out barcodes from various Nabisco snacks and then send them in before the specified deadline. And then the comic was mailed back to the lucky few. Probably in a paper it. envelope. Yeah, there there are uh, very few of these. Very few of these. Yeah, I remember our buddy. It's, uh, uh, it's in cabbage cover, right? 
Yeah. yeah. I remember everybody, AC had one at a 9.2 or 9.4 that was one of the highest graded forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Uh, this is one I didn't, I guess I knew it existed, but I wouldn't even have thought it got heat. Marvel team up number 14 with Invincible and Spider-Man, 98455. This is a book I remember when it came out because it was a big deal because it was the first time that um, Robert Kirkman got to do work on a big publication. And Invincible was huge in the comic shops. Everybody was talking about Invincible. There was a little bit of talk about Walking Dead, not as much about Invincible. If I remember at the time, maybe I just hated Walking Dead at the time, but I remember picking this book up when it came out specifically um, to read it because it had Invincible in, in it. And I was a big Kirkman fan. So I love seeing this. And Invincible just got a green lip for season two, two and three. So can I, can I just throw a random wild haired ass theory I had the other night for some reason? Sure. Invincible is the inspiration for Jonathan Kent. Like human alien baby. We get all these stories in the movies and injustice where Superman goes bad. I, this feels to me like they, they've really inspired it off of Invincible. Just throwing that out there. I don't. I don't dis. I don't. You know. Think that. I, don't, I won't throw that out the window right away. I think it's interesting. I, I, they've definitely drawn some inspiration from it. I think. Yeah. I was shocked at the price tag on like the rando minor keys in the Invincible run. Well, if you especially those early ones are are uh, tough. I mean, everything under like what ten or twenty is under ten k print run pretty early on. Like that Anessa, the first Anessa, like her oh, first yeah. appearance. It's like a two hundred dollar book on eBay. I was like, "Oh shit, I got a stack of those. I got to find them." Yeah, it, it, that uh, that series. I mean, even at the, at its peak, was not super high printed. Oh, see, look at look at look at our boy coming through in the clutch. Marvel Team Up fourteen. Came at the same time as Marvel Zombies one. Thanks, Drew. Kirk, Kirkman wrote it, so we don't claim to be the smartest. We just know some smart people. That's right. All right, uh, a nine nine sale. Just throwing it out there. Spider Man number one, McFarland nine nine, thirteen fifty. I think they got run a couple times <clears throat> with zero bids, but maybe it's a, maybe it's a different one because I don't know if it made it back to my watch list. But before, like I, you've watched I it guess, a few times. I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I think I think so. I could be wrong. I definitely watched some nine nines of this book. I just don't have the same one. Yeah, it's it not. seriously considered it because. Dude, it's 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 a nine nine, and I know that you know this isn't like it's the only nine nine. This, this book probably, is, if I was gonna guess, or probably forty or nine nines or something. That's a decent number. You know what I mean? More than other books, and um, yeah, I just I don't think it's a I don't think it's a terrible long term purchase. You know, if you're gonna strive yeah. for a nine nine. I mean, it's a it's an iconic book. Yeah, and th you know, some of these first appearance books for eight hundred bucks. When you know you can get one of the most iconic covers in history for for 1350 you know uh, yeah. in a 9.9 .9 rather than a 9.8 i mean it's not a bad it's not a bad investment because i'll tell you what in 20 years people are still going to remember who spider-man is <laughs> and mcfarlane <laughs> and tom mcfarlane uh yeah him too uh mm. a couple more spider-man uh venom gold number one nine eight fourteen seventy five that one's uh seems to be sneakily climbing um, a lot of custom labels I've been seeing on this market report. This one I just include because I love it every time I fucking see it. Peter Parker, Spectacular Spider-Man 101. Uh, it was trending about 250 probably six months ago. Slowly been growing, almost hitting 500 now. Lots of these kind of uh, things going on that have climbed from the 200 range to the four and $500 range. I mean, uh, Tales from Teen Titans uh, 44. Lo lots of books moving to the $500 books that I would have never thought would. So I, yeah, I sold I sold it like four thirty. I don't I don't feel too bad because I thought I was shooting for the moon at the time. And, On this one, uh, yeah, yeah, same same book. I have um, a hard time letting go of this one because I was chasing this before our friend Coy was, even though he got one first because he's a, you know, this was Coy. The, the mine was Coy's. Yeah, he's not but, watching, so I can admit it. But I won it, so it's not like I bought it off. <laughs> SpongeBob one nine eight three eighty six. Um. I don't even know what I think about this one. Is it shout out to the modern playback boy, play, modern playbook boys, John? That's 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 what, I, that's what I'm claiming it. Shout out to Jessup Half Price Crook. Yeah. Well, I All think day. I think our buddy here uh, Ben S has talked about it a few times too. 
Oh I, yeah, I have a nine eight of that. I the, just the, I don't even uh, know if it's drastically undervalued or overvalued. Cool well, how about this? There's there's some sneaky sneaky. Uh, I guess you would call, would you call them variants, McClay? Or in the in the later issues that oh watch, yeah, just watch oh, out yeah. for them. Yeah, you know I think I think it's super undervalued. SpongeBob is like yeah, he's like every kid from, every kid that's like twenty years, uh, you know, fifteen like 20 years dude. old. They yeah. grew up on SpongeBob in ten yeah, years. Kids they they will all want this book. So I, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's a terrible buy-in. Honestly, sadly, I hate myself for saying that, but in the market we're in, it feels okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't disagree. All right, almost to the end. I promise. Uh, sealed cases of Berserker. Uh, I saw a, a copy and a B copy both floating around the high two hundreds, three hundreds. For 120 copies, which means you're paying about 250 a book, maybe a little 225. Um, but as we said, there's a whole lot of these floating around. So I guess if you press and grade and you feel like you get lucky, maybe you can uh, make some serious cash. But an interesting, interesting, and I wonder how many we'll see. Uh, last book. This has been through this in the chat. And I figured I'd Jesus throw it out there. Christ. I don't know anything about most of these, but uh, Killing Children 8, 9, 8, Decal, Variant, 1 and 25, 17, 22. So that big hurts. money. I will go and say uh, another modern playbook shout out to uh, Bang, Bang Mr. Longshort. Uh, he is a Jeff DeCall fan. Uh, not just this one, just Jeff DeCall in general. I've been trying to find a book for him for a long time. Uh, most of his stuff that are is really good is ghosts. Once I bought ghost books, Jeff the call stuff, you're not gonna find it laying around, hardly ever. So when, I, when this was on the the hot ten, the very first time, I don't know, maybe maybe close to a year ago, it was like like 150 200 dollars raw, something like that, and me and Mel were talking about it and just like. This is good. This this book is just absolutely perfect, and I pretty much made it up in my mind. If I if I saw one for two hundred, I was going to buy it, and I I've never I've never seen it. Yeah, sweet 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 cover. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, man. This seems the the cult following or investing in whatever's happening with this uh, is uh, is is fire right now. I, I don't claim to know shit about it, and I uh, <laughs> just watching as a fucking observer. I mean, it got um, optioned, so I mean, yeah, I get you. Me and Nico were talking about this earlier in the week. You Jesus. saw the price on that Boba Fett uh, forty-two Star Wars forty-two that jo uh, John showed. Here are two figures that sold uh, last couple weeks: the Boba Fett Star Wars droids figure, the one of the you know grails of that run. Uh, sold for 12, uh, 13K Canadian. So, yeah. Um, and then a 12, a 21 back Empire Strikes Back mint on card. Boba Fett, not graded, ungraded, sold for about $6,000, 53 bids on that. There were some crazy G.I. Joe uh, sales also throughout the week. Um, but three of them that I really like that I want to talk about are these ones. My fa one of my favorite all-time G.I. Joe moments is the time I convinced my dad to take me to Gemco and get the Zartan figure because Zartan is a bad mofo. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> if you guys do not realize how badass Zartan is, there's some problems. We, we got to change some things. So this figure not only came with his own little vehicle, he came with a face mask that you could put on his hood to change his face because he shape-shifted. And if you put him in the sun, he turned blue, ladies and gentlemen. It was amazing. And every <laughs> kid wanted Zartan. And I remember getting it one day. It was awesome. And so I still, to this day, own uh, my Zartan. I own also a, uh, see, it's not sealed box, but uh, the box is all there. Everything's inside. It's complete. Um, I love that figure. A AFA 80 sold for $1,200, 37 bits. I love how they look graded in the AFAs. I even love how AFA loose figures look. When they have the, the file card in there and they're loose, they look so great. 
One of the other great G.I. Joe moments I had as a kid is waking up to Christmas morning one year and seeing the Crossfire RC G.I. Joe car under the Christmas tree. And one sold complete in box for $422. Uh, looks pretty rough. It was played with. But, man, that RC car was dope as hell as a kid. The Serpentor and Shock Viper figure two pack is a, um, a convention figure. I believe it was a special figure. So uh, if you ever see that two pack, um, you want to grab it. Uh, you can see $140 uh, still carded. All right, Ben. This one hurts. I wasn't going to show it, you guys, because I have pride. But uh, I'm cool. I'm cool. That's good. March 26th, oh, oh, <laughs> a Christ. Wayne Gretzky rookie sold in March 26, 2021 for $140,000. It sold another PSI, PSA 9 sold April 25th for $200,000. That is a $60,000 gain in a month. Dude, but but we, we saw this in Jordans, too, because I know Joe, me and Joe were talking about this in, in, in the chats, too. Do we think this is just a the month of Gretzky and then it drops back down? Because Jordan kind of normalized again theoretically. Listen, this card is, in my opinion, rarer than the Jordan. Oh wait, card. this okay. is way rarer. I don't know, boy. You yeah. gotta tell me. Listen, when people realize what this card is, this card could go up even more. Well, you told me not to buy the six hundred dollar one that was raw. Well, it was tops. Was it? Yeah. Okay. It was tops. But you still should have bought it. You still should have bought it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, boys. Yeah. So uh, this is the one that hurts me the most, you guys. Oh, this really boy. hurts. This really hurts. But we move on because uh, like last week or last – yeah, last week there was a lot of uh, football Hall of Famer rookies that sold. I saw quite a few basketball Hall of Famer rookies that sold. We had a Wilt Chamberlain 1961 Fleer PSA 8 rookie sold for $92,000. Damn. We had a 1957 Tops Bill Russell rookie PSA 7 sell for $78,000. Yeah, we damn. have a 1961 Oscar Robinson Fleer rookie PSA 9 sold for $81,000. And a 69 Tops Kareem Abdul Jabbar Lou Alcindor rookie PSA 8 sold for $80,000. Oh and, and you know what? There's, there's some a, a little bit under the radar, it seems like to me, some Hall of Fame um, guys. That uh, aren't quite getting the love because they're more new, like they're newer players. So, like the Dirks or the, uh, you know, eventually Mellow here, uh, stuff like that, just sort of flying under the under the radar. It seems like Tracy McGrady, um, you know, I'm not. Uh, I think even Vince Carter stuff, things like that. So, you know, uh, Hall of Fame players that are current or that are, are about to be or just were seem to be could could still at a somewhat decent price in basketball. While people focus on, uh, I don't know, other things. Well, everybody's chasing hot rookies right now. And um, I've noticed some weird trends with cards uh, that's going on that I won't get too deep into. But it is just, it's totally different than what I've ever seen. Uh, the way that prices are uh, going up and down with certain, depending on in season, out of season. Like back in the day, Ben, when it was off season, cards were like half the price. But in season, they would go up. Now it seems like it's the opposite. Uh, you know, and the off-season cards go up because people are all talking about them, I guess. I don't know. But, uh, you know, some of these cards, like, listen, if you guys don't think that John Morant rookies right now, PSA 10 Prism rookies are a great buy, you're crazy. I know they're like 200 bucks, but that is a steal. And 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 even Zion's at $500, like Ben was saying, is a steal. But those are down two, $300 from, you know, last week. So it's really weird. All right. Well, can I ask you guys a question? Uh, nope. So we see like uh, X Men one, FF one, FF five through the fucking roof. We are, you know, with the X Men years and years away. They keep showing that uh, Fantastic Four four, um, but I sure as hell haven't heard any news. I Boom. assume we're years and years away, right? Um, the spec cycle is different than it ever has been. I mean, I, it just keeps changing and changing. And I wonder if that's sort of the same thing that's happening with uh, cards. Yes. I, I, yep. Big money, new collectors, new money. You're 100% right. People do, do we, learning new new trends are being created and happening. And it's weird, man. Do we think it's this is Nat Turner's cards? Because he has to buy from PSA. He bought PSA. So he had to sell some of his cards. I didn't know. Nat Turner have a big collection. 
Oh, Nat Turner has the biggest card collection on the planet, dude. Like, look wow. at his Instagram page. It is wow. fire. I mean, Smart I man. Mean, if you if you're in either into comics or cards, I mean, I just think they're. It's a more fun investment than stocks. I mean, yeah, stocks you can make a lot of money, but oh. you, you all you get is a piece of stupid paper. That there we go. This is like fun. Like you get to actually hold. You know, what I mean, like that. that this is where I mean, Ben and I agree, fucking one hundred percent. Right? Like, who really wants to look at uh, data sheets for Enron? Like, I don't give a yeah. shit. Who cares? Look at that freaking Will Chamberlain. That is ridiculous. That's like a piece of history. I mean, that's Ooh. unbelievable. Yeah. Take my so thousand dollars is probably cheap for that. Honestly, yeah. that sixty-one Fleer set is so beautiful, man. I it's just a and I love the fifty-seven set too. All right, I've talked about this card or not card, this sticker a lot on the show, and I've never showed. I don't think I've ever showed examples of it, but I went and grabbed a couple examples. Now these are from February, I believe, just two days apart. But this is to show you guys how rare and and how tough this card, this sticker is. This is the Jordan 85 Prison Jewel oh, sticker. Uh, $53,000 <laughs> it sold for on February 18th, and a day later it sold for $48,000. So, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely crazy. So bad. So yeah. bad. Yeah. But tough. Super tough to find, obviously. All right. Now, we talked about the Jerry Rice rookie PSA 1086 selling for $90,000 last Jesus week. Jesus Christ. Now, another one sold. For ninety thousand dollars, ninety five thousand dollars. I think I have one of those cards somewhere. Not in that condition. Not in that condition, no. But but here's the crazy thing: a PSA ten Joe Montana rookie sells for half the price. Wow, uh, that's <laughs> that shows you how rare it is to get those eighty six cards centered, decent grade. The green border shows the white corners super super bad. Um, so again, I know nothing about cards as everyone who watches the show routinely is aware, but I was trying to explain to somebody else uh, about the uh, Reggie White that sounded that set. That's like 12,000 for a fucking, you know, 10. And then like loose cards are like 12 bucks on eBay. And, 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 and people are, are also, listen, if you guys remember those old 84 and 85 USFL sets that have the, you know, the XRCs of Steve Young, Jim Kelly, Herschel Walker, Reggie White, Doug Flutie, you know, uh, man, if, if you have those sitting around somewhere, put them away, yeah. keep them. And I think this, quite possibly with this, is um, uh, no, nobody's really trying to say that anybody's beat out Jerry Rice for the, as a GOAT. You know what I mean? And I, I wonder if somehow, you know, Tom Brady uh, with this amount of Super Bowls and, you yep. know, record for touchdown passes and also playing in a passing era, you know what I mean? Even though Joe was undefeated in the Super Bowl, by the way, um, it showed, you know, that, that could that could possibly hurt. You know what I mean? And, and Joe Montana, like, you know, not, he's never been able, like, got, gotten a gig as an announcer or, like, part of a studio show or anything. You know, he's had, you know, he's got Skechers commercials. Well, I think, guys. I think he got ruined by the Chiefs, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, Brady Brady moved to, to Tampa Bay, and if he didn't win that, you know, if he didn't win that Super Bowl, I think maybe, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, because I remember 94, possibly. right? It was the Chiefs when night was it 94, 95, or whatever. I 96. Like 96 or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Dude, yeah. everybody remember like, oh, it's old man Montana on the Chiefs. You know, it's he like, took him yeah. to a to a championship game. Uh, yeah, he I was know. a championship game. I, yeah. I know. I he know. played well. He wasn't. And shot. his back was trash. I know his back was trash. Yeah. I mean, I remember it, but I think so. I guess I'm a I get the younger guy in the group. I think I think that's what I remember the most. I mean, I remember 49ers and the heyday of that stuff. But I think every, every young kid, millennial kid, remembers him with the Chiefs, and you know, doesn't remember the 49ers heyday. I remember yeah. watching Joe Montana take the fucking 49ers down the field in like 30 seconds in 1988 in the Super Bowl yeah, against Cincinnati. The Bengals, yeah, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and it was fucking magical. It was yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah, magical. Yeah, magical, blah, blah, blah. Before before Stein has a, a fucking stroke, uh, and I understand, talk about the Chargers Steelers, and I'll fucking suffer in the same way. Um, I was talking to my uh, local comic shop owner who, when I say he has um, like retired from comics, that's the understatement of the century. Like he just doesn't give a fuck. Okay. 
uh, at all. Nice guy, just doesn't care. He sort of cares a little more than he did, you know, a year ago, but basically gave up years and years ago. Um, one of those people who just chases people out of his fucking store. About um, card people coming over to comics, and I, I was using these kind of examples of like, you know, regular cards being worth nothing, but the tens being worth astronomical money. Um, asking him if he thought that the same thing was happening, you know, as card collectors moved over to comics, that they were looking for, uh, you know, nine, eight or die like uh, specimens. Um, and that if we'd see a similar sort of escalation of, of high grade uh, specimens of like 90s books, 80s books that we've seen with uh, trading cards. Um, he said, yes, I think he just fucking was trying to agree with me and get me to shut the fuck up. <laughs> uh, for me, it's a lot more complicated kind of analysis because we like to read books. We open them up. We all sort of know that the intricacies of grading comics are a little different than I think cards. I mean, cards have to be far more perfect than yeah. comics. I, I just wanted to know if you guys thought that was a thing or, or interesting or. I think one of the guys said it best in the comments, uh, if you scroll up, like, I don't know, halfway through, he said that cards are more expensive than comics right now. Like like 95 grand for this, right? Now, we'll even say 46 grand. All these big numbers you're seeing. When you see a 9.8 for, like, three or four grand, if you're in, like, the card world, that's shit nothing now. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I hate to say it. like yeah, It's card- like a zion base. Uh, zion base. Uh, yeah, Stein, Stein, knows the, Stein that everybody knows here. I mean, Card money is different from comic money, right? I mean, your card guy is, it's, it's like us saying comic book money and then going buying some fucking pogs or some bullshit that doesn't mean nothing. It's like, dude, I'll buy a million stacks of those. Who cares? You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, when you have that much money, it's like a billionaire playing in, you know, buying like squares for like 10 bucks. No one cares. I mean, you know, like. Here's yeah. something kind of crazy. Sean, you're going to like this one. Well, dislike it like I dislike it. So. <laughs> Sapphire, if you guys know the story of Top oh, Sapphire, boy. Tops releases a limited number of their Chrome series with a beautiful Sapphire sheen on it. Are you full Hughes? <sighs> <sighs> I love Sapphire. I know. And I love Garbage Pail Kid Sapphire oh, more, but they're so I, expensive. I yeah, I know. On the left is a sold break for just the Atom Bomb card. They don't even know if any of them are going to hit, right? Five? Yeah, you could just completely miss. You paid thirteen fifty for a chance for the Atom Bomb. Yeah, and that's for five boxes. Not five boxes. It is five boxes, but there's 32 cards in a box. So there's like, what, four packs, uh, eight cards per pack, four packs in that box. So you get 20 packs out of 20 yeah, It's probably eight packs, four cards a pack. Yeah. That's, okay. how, that's how the like the soccer was. Yeah. So uh, it's a very limited chance, and they just want the atom bomb. They're, they're, they're bidding on a chance to get the atom bomb out of that. Here's a set. You guys can see how beautiful they are. Look how beautiful they look. I mean, they just sheen that that beautiful oh, it's blue. So it's a so set, wonderful. a partial set sold for six hundred seven hundred and sixty eight dollars. Oh man, I really yeah. wish I could get some. Was this sold out instantly, Brian? Like yeah. anything else? Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Now this is for bring it back to all you comic guys for every one of you guys that haven't left yet because of the card stuff. <laughs> These are still selling. Oh boy! <laughs> All right, Stein, me and you, buddy. I got a box. Are they start grading them yet? Nope. <laughs> They're not gonna start grading anything until June. And oh. that's well, that's assuming that's assuming that they actually. And I'm not convinced that they're gonna ever have a cheap service again. I'm not. I, I don't think they're going to. I think. Okay, but I think it's I gonna be. Get together, I think the cheapest service you're gonna have expensive. is fifty bucks a card. Yeah, but I'll pay for that, and you and I can get together, and our, we can look at all this stuff, and then I'll bring the rest of it home and, and sell it on the eBay. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I told you a long time we ago. Could, we could do a break. It'll of course, be I, actually have, got an I actually have to get home. <laughs> I will well, say, for, yeah. <laughs> learning, I learned, learning myself the, the hard way on um, – not necessarily the hard way on comics. You know what I mean? Because I, pre- I mean everything – all, all the comics I have are owned free and clear. You know what I mean? I don't I don't have like a a, a safe with a bunch of credit card charges and shit. You know what I mean? So like, but with the with the getting back into the cards, and then now that you can't even get open new packs, I feel like I didn't really pay for anything that I really have, especially with last year's like full box of NBA loads of every rookie. Didn't grade anything. I've been like too. I did. Uh, I've been too scared to sell because of that. 
Same. Um, with those and I don't and it takes a while sort of you know to organize like I've, I've had a system for selling comics for a long time but to do that for the cards and I'm like well thankfully um I'm not I've, I've I mean I've sold a couple cards but basically I've sold I've sold nothing and me so too. there's like that that that's that's good for me you know so I'm, I'm like okay so maybe one of these days and they're like oh they're not even gonna grade any cards for months even if you send a minimal well, why am I going to get out the magnifying glass and figure out what to fucking send in if I'm not going to get it graded? You're talking so about the guy just, who has so many Tatis rookies. Remember, Clay, we were just pulling Tatis, Guerrero rookies, all these rookies. And it's like, what do I do with all this shit now? I just, it's just still sitting in, dude, they're all still in top loaders and they're just chilling there. And I'm like, do I just hold on to them like trout and just whatever, man? Like, I don't know. Like, Tatis, they just did a, they just did a Tatis uh, st- stat. He's like leading every category his first season off of multiple Hall of Famers. Like it's crazy. Like Pete well, Rose. Listen, guys, I, mean, I, I just love the fact that we're seeing the Deadpool card still get two hundred plus. I don't care if it's graded or not. Uh, SGC PSA. I don't care. Uh, it still cracks me up to see that card selling for what it sells for. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the market report.